autumn winter coats and jackets for 2021. I've got something old, something new, something borrowed, and even something blue. So I thought you might enjoy seeing all my favorite coats and jackets, how I style them, and what I look out for when I'm buying a new one. I'll also be sharing my edit of the best pigs from the high street and beyond as we go along. So don't forget to let me know your favorites in the comments section below. So let's start with something new and a piece that I procrastinated over for quite a long time, one beautiful camel coat. So I finally decided on this gorgeous version from COS that's just arrived. I wanted that robe style shape, something I could wrap myself up in once the weather got really cold. I was also searching for that deep camel tone that felt rich and sumptuous. To say I'm chuffed to have finally found the one would be an understatement. Essentially, I just adore this coat. I think it's perfect and it's exactly what I was looking for. The cut, the shade, the fabric content even, having been made from a blend of wool and tensile, it's like it was made for me. Autumn winter coats would definitely be one area I would always invest in. But I also try and choose pieces that I would envisage having for life. I try and stay away from anything too on trend and instead I try and search out those really timeless pieces that I don't think will date. But the new and noteworthy camel coats I found along the way would be this one I found from the designer Totem. From the high street I also like this one at Mango. I thought this looked really original at Nordstrom and of course 12 stories have a beautiful collection of winter coats. Another new piece in my wardrobe that arrived the other day would be this beautiful accrue blazer done in 100% wool. Now it's pretty heavyweight, nicely so for winter, so I think both aesthetically but also practically it's a piece that I will probably be styling an awful lot this season. Now you might have seen over on my Instagram account that I've been styling it in lots of different ways already. So today I wanted to show you something a little bit different that hopefully you will love as much as me. I love the boxy fit, that slightly longer length, the winter white tone, which I just love. The feel of the wool is absolutely stunning. And a really nice point of difference with this one is that it actually comes with a matching belt too, should you wish to change up. And it's quite nice to have that as another option. I personally never save white just for summer. I just love the look of a crisp white or beige jacket to brighten up a cold winter morning. And it always gives your outfits that sprinkle of effortless polish that we're all after. As always, I shall link everything featured in the description box below, but I would highly recommend taking a look at this brand at the end of this video. I could very happily add just about every piece they have into my own wardrobe. Other wool blazers that I found recently would be this lovely oversized wool blazer at And Other Stories. I love this dark brown shade at Cos. I have this easy blazer at Evelyn in clay, but you could go classic with black. And Arquette are always great for high quality wool blazers too. Next up to a winter coat that I bought quite a while ago now from Debenhams, done in this beautiful deep shade of navy. I do find having a navy coat in my autumn winter wardrobe really helpful, as I seem to style them most often with all those lovely brown autumnal tones. I wear it with black, I love it against a crew, and even a pop of red from time to time. The only slight downside about this particular coat is that I went for it true to size rather than sizing up. I do prefer to have a little more room in my winter coats these days, both because I like the look, but also it then means I can layer to my heart's content underneath. So if you're looking for a new one for your own wardrobe, I would seriously consider sizing up, or at the very least trying the next size up and seeing how it looks. Sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't, but when you find one that does, it can make a really effortlessly chic look. I shall link below some of my favorite navy coats that I've found recently across the high street and with a few independents. I also have this navy blazer in my wardrobe, but although it's slightly lighter and it won't necessarily work for the height of winter, it is something I'm reaching for a lot at the moment. Perhaps an alternative in wool would work perfectly as it gets really, really cold. Or again, you could size up in this one and do a bit of layering as well. 
Now to another blazer that I just bought down from the attic to style for another season. This blazer came from a brand called Poco and has been made from 100% wool in this really lovely light shade of grey. I'm particularly loving grey at the moment and there's some beautiful options across the high street and with the designers. I find it a really soft neutral tone that seems to integrate with virtually my entire wardrobe which is no mean feat. And depending on the shade of grey you go for, it can give outfits an edge that might otherwise feel a little bit boring. Even adding a grey scarf into the mix, like this one that I got from a brand called Edward Brown, really elevates the entire look. I'm actually on the hunt for a grey or possibly herringbone with a bit of charcoal wool winter coat. Strangely, it's harder than you'd think to find, so if anyone spotted a good one, please do let me know in the comments section. I found this one at Cars Again, which I think is beautiful, but I have shopped there so much recently that I feel like I should do something different. I love this herringbone wool version at Marcella London again. How amazing are those shoulders? I think this two-tone version at Jigsaw is really original. And 12 stories again always have one or two in each shade that I would be more than happy to add to basket. I actually do have this great herringbone blazer that I got quite a while ago now from Everlane and that has been invaluable in my wardrobe. So I'm really hoping to emulate this kind of style but with a winter coat. So whether you go for a blazer, a coat or a jacket, I would advise having some shade of grey in your wardrobe for autumn winter. It's really elegant, it feels sophisticated, it always manages to elevate my outfits and if you choose the right one, you should have it for life. Now it's not exactly a winter coat as such, but I always have and I would always recommend having at least one beautiful camel trench coat in your capsule wardrobe. I wear mine a lot, as you've probably seen, but I just find them so incredibly versatile for all wet and windy English weather. And I would say it's probably one of my hardest working pieces. This version is very much a classic with Cezanne that they tend to bring back in stock all throughout the year. And I seem to wear mine all year round. Only with the height of summer, say two weeks when it's boiling hot in this country, would I probably not reach for it. You can either go full on Parisian style, introducing stripes and tan details, or keep it really simple with your styling underneath and let the coat do all the talking for you. The thing I love about a camel trench coat is when you find a good one, minimal effort is required elsewhere. I could throw mine on for the school run with virtually any concoction underneath and it still makes me feel put together. The sign of a great piece. Tips for choosing the best trench coat, I would say choose your fabric content wisely. Too thick and it won't work year round, which it absolutely should. Too thin and you'll never reach for it in winter. I often size up to let me layer whatever the weather but I still like mine to sit nicely on the shoulders so I retain that elegant finish. Staying with Suzanne now, but to something a little bit different with my wintergreen cropped coat. Now this was quite different for me on lots of different levels. One, because lengthwise it's a bit shorter than I would usually go for. And two, obviously because of that green shade. This is actually the only item I've got in green in my entire wardrobe. But that's probably why I love it so much, because it's very original for me, and surprisingly, I can style it into so many more outfits than I ever thought possible. So I really would advise trying to step out of your comfort zone just from time to time when it comes to your winter coats. You can still keep the cut and the shape really timeless so you know you'll have it forever, but there's no harm in trying just a few different shades. What's the worst that will happen? You might just come across something that really suits you and feels really original at the same time. A big favorite for me when it comes to my autumn winter coats would be this beauty that I got from Mango's Current Season. It's double breasted and I sized up to get that oversized fit. And to say it's had its cost per wear already would be an understatement. I've styled it like this, like this, like this, and like this, and they're just the outfit ideas that I took pictures of. So today I'm sharing a different outfit idea to hopefully stress just how versatile a beautiful winter coat like this can really be. I actually just realized, and I don't know how I missed this before, but Mango have actually got this exact same coat in a lovely shade of gray. So I think that might now be a contender for my gray coat wish list. Watch this space. 
And now to something borrowed. I actually bought this wool winter coat for my mum many years ago. And as daughters do, I borrowed it for something and it stayed with me. Obviously, for nostalgic reasons, it's nice to have it on my rail. I can remember her quite vividly in certain places wearing it. But also from a style and outfit perspective, I really like to have it too. It's more of a tailored coat than say the mango one that I showed you before and it works in a different way for my outfit ideas. The tailoring makes it feel really smart and elegant and that's something I tend to look out for too when I'm shopping for new winter coats. Is the tailoring particularly on trend or is it classic that will stand the test of time for years to come? These are the kind of questions I ask myself and I think really carefully about actually before I buy anything. I really hope you've enjoyed taking a look at all my winter coats and jackets for autumn winter 2021 and I'd love to hear in the comment section below if you've got a favourite or maybe you've got a favourite from the new pieces that I found across the high street and with the designers. It's always really lovely to hear from you all so do let me know. Thank you as always for all your support for my channel and what I do on here. Hopefully you know by now that I'm always very appreciative. I just hope my videos give you a little bit of inspiration and lots of outfit ideas along the way. Big hugs everyone and I will see you next Sunday.